Well, hello again. Look, uh, I wanted to show you how to test a standard garden tractor motorcycle shunt type regulator. I have one on my Honda RT5000. Now, I've seen other videos and they use sophisticated test equipment with green lights on them that tell you they're good. I'm going to show you how to do it with an ohm meter. Here's the regulator that's in question. It's basically an SH547-12. It's a shunt type, which means it's a short circuit regulator. Here's the back view of that same regulator. This is the actual regulator off of my RT5000 tractor. And it shunts or short circuits, regulates the voltage at about 14.7 volts DC. Now here's what we're going to use to test this thing. Standard ohm meter with a diode test function. This is a cheap one. Here's a little bit more expensive one. Uh, hooked to the diode function showing open loop and then showing what the meter should read when it's got a diode that's forward biased. The pinouts on the regulator itself amount to a B plus, B minus ignition and the AC1 and AC2 which connect across the coil in the uh, generator or the, the lawnmower itself. Here's a schematic diagram from Honda showing the connector, the alternator, how it connects to AC1 and AC2, and the battery that's being charged, and, and the ignition switch that turns on that allows the regulator to, to actually regulate uh, the voltage going to the battery. Now what we're going to do is we're going to test the components inside this regulator through the pins on the outside. I've designed a truth table with, with 12 static tests and basically 8 dynamic tests that help you uh, walk you through this. Okay, what I wanted to show you was how to check a diode on this meter in the forward diode position and basically uh, what we're going to be doing is checking all the diodes in this regulator rectifier right here. So, if you have a diode, most diodes often have a silver stripe on one end and not on the other end. That is the direction of the arrow towards the silver stripe. So if we put the negative on the non-striped end and the positive on the striped end, we should get no flow. The diode is reverse biased. If we switch those around, as the theory is the, the flow will be from positive to negative, you can see that the meter now reads the forward bias potential of the junction in the diode or about five and a half, six, uh, six tenths of a volt. Okay, that said, we're going to test all the diodes in the rectifier on the regulator. Okay, with that in mind, let's test each diode in the rectifier, in this rectifier regulator, against this truth table. Now, after the video, I'll come back and I'll try to explain each step in a little bit more detail. Okay, meter set to diode test. We're going to test all the tests in the truth table, basically starting with AC2 positive to AC1 open loop. We'll reverse those around. AC1 positive to AC2, still an open loop. Then AC1 positive to B, we've got the first diode junction that we're testing here. And these are all illustrated in the pictorials. Okay, then AC1 to B minus should be an open loop. And it is. Next we're going to go with AC2 to B minus, open loop. AC2 to B, we should get 6 tenths of a volt. So that diode junction is good. Then we're going to test B minus positive to B, which is 1.1 is basically two diode junctions we're going through to get between those two connections. Okay, then we're going to test B minus to AC2, which is actually the, a reversal here. We should see an open loop. No, wait a second. B minus to AC2. Okay, we've got another diode junction in there, correct? Uh, B minus to AC1. Another diode junction in there, correct? Uh, then we've got B to AC1, open loop, B to AC2, all the diodes are reverse diode, open loop, and then B to B minus, open loop. So basically the regulator, the, the rectifier in this rectifier regulator is good. All the diode junctions uh, seem to be okay. 
Uh, we're, we're not testing to ignition, by the way, that's what you saw in there, is, is a short circuit to ignition, uh, because that's a, a circuit that, that we really don't know about. We'll, we'll test that later in, in, in the dynamic tests. So grab the truth table, and let's go through each one of these steps. I'll try to explain it, but the manual is available online at classicmanuals.net. Now the first step is testing out the reverse diodes, the reverse bias, make sure the diodes are not short circuited for the AC parts. Here's AC tests one and two. The next thing we're gonna do, AC tests three and four, is test the forward bias on, on basically one of the diodes in the rectifier itself, and that diode is this one shown in this picture right, right here. The next step test the next two steps test out the forward and reverse bias on this particular diode. Then we're going to check out the forward bias on both of these two diodes. And they should read as per the truth table. Test 9 and 10 check this diode. Make sure that it's it will work in the forward and reverse directions. And finally, the last two steps, check these two diodes to make sure that they're not short-circuited. If everything works okay, the, the rectifier is probably operational in this unit. Now the dynamic testing basically tests out the two diodes shown along with the two SCRs. Now what the SCRs do is a short-circuit the generator coil when the voltage gets over the regulator voltage. Now I used a variable power supply to simulate the regulator voltage at below the regulator voltage and then above the regulator voltage to test each one of the two SCRs in the diagram. So here's the dynamic shunt test on the right hand side of the diagram and here's the components we're going to test out in these tests. Basically we're going to verify that the SCRs trigger at the design regulating voltage. Now here's a video of that. I wanted to do the dynamic test now and I'm just going to show you how I've hooked this up because you've got to be very careful you don't short circuit the connectors. We've got positive going to B, negative going to B minus from the power supply and I've got a, a pigtail lead here from the positive that I can tap on to the IG terminal of the regulator. So the meter is going across AC1 and AC2 and you can see we've got 9.81 volts. If we touch, touch that to there, we still show an open loop. I'm going to increase this to a little over 15 volts and watch the AC1 and AC2 terminals when I touch this to there. You can see they basically short circuit and they should short circuit in the positive direction and the negative direction. So let's switch the meter leads around and see if we get the same effect on the AC circuits. Okay, 15 volts, touch that, it does short circuit in that direction. Now I'm going to drop it down below 15, 14 volts, we should get no short circuit. So the regulator is regulating between 14 and 15 volts, which says, hey, this, this regulator is, is good as far as we can tell. So this particular regulator rectifier appears to be working as it's supposed to. It regulates at 14.7 volts and all of the diodes seem to be operational. Uh, you can find a PDF copy of this at classicmanuals.net. Thank you very much for looking. We'll see you later. Search our site for keywords shunt, regulator, rectifier and you'll find this manual.